In the last segment on uh, Hilchot Purim, we started to speak about the mitzvah Mikra Megillah. And we touched on um, the fact that on, in Yushalayim, which is a year Shemukaf Mizman Yoshua Ben Nun, okay, in any other cities beside Yushalayim, if it had a, it was walled around, it had a wall from the time of Yeshua, even if those walls are not in existence today, like Yericho as an example, okay, if we're Zoche one day to, to, to live in Yericho, so it would also have a din of, of a mukaf, meaning, and, and therefore we would read on Tetvav. Okay, now I want to touch to, right now in this segment to talk a little bit more about Shushan Purim. Okay, the fact is that um, Yushalayim is not limited to the old city of Yushalayim that has walls around it. Okay, the urban sprawl of Yushalayim that started outside the walls, okay, and then s kept on spreading from, from, from Yafo, etc., until, until it's, uh, I don't know, you might include nowadays even Ramot, um, is all part of Yushalayim. Almost everybody considers the sprawl to be Yushalayim. The question is why? So, um, according to Rav Tukachinsky, according to most poskim, it all takes on a halacha of Yushalayim. And even though you're not inside the walls, but it has a shame, Yushalayim, because it's connected. Meaning there's no gap of houses that's 150 amma from, let's say, a space in between the, uh, in between the houses, and therefore it has a din of Yushalayim. But the truth is that in the Gemara and Megillah, the Gemara speaks about another way of a connection of houses or areas to a, such a city. And the Gemara speaks about a samuch venireh. Somuch and nire, meaning to be close in proximity and to be near air, most people think it means that you could see Yushalayim from that place. Okay, and I'll get, get to that in a moment. If you're Samuch and near air, so they also considered part of Yushalayim or, a, or, or Ir Mukaf. Now, here there's a little bit of a Machokat Rishon because the Rambam and the Tur paskin that you need both uh, Samuch and near air. Okay, that's not enough that you could see from far away. But you need Samuch and Nira together. Okay? According to them, a place like, uh, uh, let's say, North Ephrat, that has a very, very good view of Yushalayim, wouldn't be Chayiv in Tedvav. Okay? Uh, because you need to be Samuch, you need to be within a meal, okay? which is like two miles, not one mile, like two miles of, of the area, and Nira at the same time. However, there are other Rishonim, like Rashi, Interestingly enough, and here it's a little bit nahafahu because because the Shulchan Aruch paskins like Rashi, who's who is, you would assume Ashkenazi, right? Um, the Shulchan Aruch paskins like Rashi, meaning to say that if you're if you're near Afapi Samuch, that you'd be considered part of Yushalayim. And the Rama paskins, um, if I if I remember correctly, like the Rambam, okay, uh, that you have to be you have to have both. Now, the reason why in Efrat, perhaps, um, they don't uh, do it on, on, on Tetvav, even though they could clearly see Yushalayim, and there are many such cities that could clearly see Yushalayim, is because of the sheet of the Ran. Okay? The Ran, what the Ran said is the only time Lot Sarech Samuch is because the main thing is Mishtatev bin Yanei Ha'ir. Mishtatev bin Yanei Ha'ir, I would say in more modern terms, is to be part of the municipality on a tax level, on a services level. Meaning if the garbage trucks or the, or the fire engines or, or the street cleaners, etc., are, are um, employees of Yushalayim and they go out to, to Ramot to do the service, or if uh, it could be also, let's say, a local bus is sometimes an indication that's part of the same city, that incorporates it into the same city. But there is a very good chance that one could claim that if you live in uh, North Ephrat and you could see Yushalayim, that you really are high of uh, to read it on Tetvav, and uh, not Yudalid. Uh, the best of my knowledge, people are not knowing like that. I wouldn't be surprised if you had little, you know, enclaves in, in, in Ramot of uh, Rabbanim that disagree. I think uh, originally when it came to Bait Vagan, there was uh, quite a disagreement. But to the best of my knowledge nowadays, all these areas that's like the urban sprawl of, of Yushalayim, all follow uh, Tetvav, and, and, they, and they, they do all the mitzvah just like in Yushalayim. Okay. Um, Rav Shalom Zalman Orbach has a tshuva about Ein Kerem, which now also, I think, is physically connected to all of Yushalayim, 
but for decades was not connected to Yerushalayim. There was, it, was, it was quite an incredible gap. And he said, no, it doesn't make a difference because of the Mishtatef Ben Yoni Ha'ir, it was considered as part, of, as part of one city. I think one halacha that all yeshiva guys here in yeshiva always want to know is that Purim is coming to an end. I had an incredible suda at my Rebbe's house and I'm still able to walk. And if I'm still able to walk, wouldn't I want to join my friends in Yushalayim, in other yeshivas in Yushalayim, and continue the party for another day? And get on a bus, if I have the koach to get on a bus, and I'll go to Yushalayim, okay, in the afternoon, after, after the, 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 the suda is, is, is finished, and I'll go to Yushalayim and get there, so just in time for Megillah reading in Yushalayim. And the Gemara relates to that. That's a ben ir, meaning alon shvut, shahalach lekrach, meaning Yerushalayim, what exactly is the din? Now here, there are many, many different uh, psakim among the achronim, many different psakim. And what I'm going to do is first tell you the rules that the Shulchan Aruch, uh, according to understanding of the Mishnah Bura, set out. And there are four basic rules, okay? We're talking about, let's say, a guy at five o'clock, the sun is still out, it didn't set yet, five o'clock wants to board a bus, and he wants to go from Alon Shvut, and he wants to go to Yushalayim. So, rule number one is that most posts can hold that Kviat Makom, you know, is establishing a place, it's enough that you establish a place for one day, and that becomes your, your Makom. Porus ben Yomo, that's considered your Makom, as opposed to many other halacha. But in this area, one day is enough. Rule number two, that the Ikazman of a Kriya, a Kriyat Megillah, is in the daytime. And therefore, the daytime or the sunrise is the critical or is the most important time when determining are you considered a Yerushalmi or not. Rule number three, the critical moment, um, the critical moment is the moment to, to determine the time of Kriya in the place that you are now in. I said the critical time is the laning or the time of, the, of, of laning in the place that you're in. Meaning to say that if, in you, if you're in Alon Shvut and the laning was this year on Thursday morning, that's the critical time that, this, that determines whether you are considered a Ben Alon Shvut or somewhere else. Meaning to say you, you are there at that time and you plan to be at that time, you're a Ben Alon Shvut. But now, and this is the fourth rule, you're getting on the bus at five o'clock and you're getting on the bus and you're saying to yourself, well, I plan on being in Yushalayim now, I'm going to Yushalayim, okay? Um, does that change you to become a, a, a Ben Yushalayim? And I think the short answer, the simple answer, is that in that particular case, it doesn't, it doesn't, at least according to the Psak of both Rav Lichensin and Rav Amital, and that's because of a different reason, and that is you can't become Chayev twice, you can't discharge the mitzvah two times in a row, okay? And that in itself is a little bit problematic because there's Yerushalmi that says the following, Ben Ir, Sha'aka dirato b'leil tedvav, v'halach lo l'krach, nitchayev l'kan u'lekan. Yerushalmi seems to be relating exactly to this case. In other words, Yerushalmi dirato, you planned on being okir your dira, which until now we assume that one day is enough to be considered uprooting your dira, and now you're going to Yerushalayim, and according to Yushalmi, Chayev Lakan, Ulakan, which is explicitly saying that you can't be Chayev twice and you have to be Makayim all four mitzvah two times. To that, Rav, uh, Rav Amital Zal, Paskin, like his Rebbe, Rav Tzim Pesach Frank, that it's simply Machloka between Bavli and Yushalmi. And the Bavli holds you can't be Chayev twice. And we don't pass on like Yushalmi. And therefore, you're never going to be Chayev another time. Rav Lichensin Zal, pointed out a different, a different Indian. And he says in Bavli, the Lashon is Ben Yishaholach Lekrach. And Yushalmi, the Lashon is Ben Yishikokar Dirato. And Vlichon sings, I'll say, the Okar Dirato means to uproot your dira, meaning to take all your belongings from your dorm room and put it into a car and then move to a different dira exactly that afternoon for a plan of living there at least 30 days. In which case, then you'd be chayv l'kan l'kan according to the Yushalmi. And since almost, that's almost never the case, both according to Rav Lichensin and Rav Amital, you would never be chayv twice. However, there are poskim um, that do say that you're chayv twice. Rav Shalom Zalman Orbach, 
uh, the shot of the Mishnah Brura, I, my understanding of the Chazonish as well, that to be choshesh for the Yush Yushalmi, okay, um, if on the beginning of the Tetvav, the morning of Tetvav, meaning if you sleep over in Yushalayim this year on Thursday night and you're going to wake up on, thir on Friday morning in Yushalayim, according to them, you do have to do all the mitzvot, all the mitzvot, twice, meaning at night the Kriya would be chayav, and the other, and the morning you'd be chayav a Kriya, and all the other three mitzvot you have to do, do over twice. When people ask me what to do, I say to them, I follow like my Rosh Hashivas, that you're not really chayav twice. However, uh, there is a situation that Rav Lichon Zal said that you would be chayav twice, and that is if you're a Yushalmi, meaning if your parents and you live in Yushalayim, but now your dira is in yeshiva, so when you get on the bus to spend Thursday night at home, so to speak, then that would be considered an akad dirato, and according to Rav Lichtenstein, you would be chayav to do all, all, all four mitzvahs twice. Um, what if a person doesn't want to, to be mechayev himself like that? And by the way, this would apply also, perhaps, if, if a person doesn't really live in Yushalayim, but has a, a flat in Yushalayim that, that his family often uses and stays in, that would also raise the suffix, whether you have to be chayev another time. And the best thing to do for such a Yushalmi would be to go visit your, your friends on Thursday night and make sure to come back, okay, and sleep in Alon Shvut, so that you, when you wake up in the morning, you'll be in a lone shvut, and then there's no suffering. What if a person gets on the bus with exactly that thing in, in mind, meaning, I'm a Yushalmi, so, and I don't want to be high of all the mitzvah a second time, once was enough, and so he says, okay, I'm going now, and I plan on coming back, and the, late, the last bus, I'm going to come back to yeshiva, and I'm going to sleep Thursday, Thursday night in yeshiva. But, as you, nature takes it sometimes, push comes to shove, and somehow... For some reason, he misses the last bus, and he ends up falling asleep in Yushalayim, and when he opens his eyes, it's the morning, and behold, he's in Yushalayim. So here, the halacha is, also according to Shulcha and Mishnah Bura, that when you did the Maisa Akira, which would mean to get on the bus, your plan wasn't to stay in Yushalayim, so according to most, that's not considered an Akira. And if you sincerely were planning to come back, you wouldn't have to be chayev then to go and scramble and do the other mitzvot uh, a second time. Okay, now uh, I want to move a little bit to another uh, practical halacha when listening to the Megillah itself. Okay, when you listen to the Megillah, it's important to listen and have kavana to be yotze the bracha with the mevarech. Kavana of being yotze. The mevarech also has kavana to be motzi you. Now we're talking not just the bracha, but the mitzvah megillah itself. Okay, you want dat latzeit and dat lahotzi from both sides. Another din. What happens if a person talks in the middle of megillah, or if a person sitting next to somebody who gets into a coughing fit right next to him in the middle of megillah, and as a result, he doesn't hear even one letter of the megillah, and the halach is you're not yotzei. And it's very common. It's common for people that are a little bit overzealous and in, in, in making noise for Haman. It's common for people that want to bring their little kid to enjoy the Megillah and they start whining to the point that you missed the word or you missed the letter. So what are you supposed to do? So a lot of people think that's why some people buy a Megillah, a real Megillah, so they could read it from the Megillah itself. Eh, wrong. That is not the reason. As a matter of fact, I can't think of any reason at all that any Jew would buy a Megillah other than if he's a Balkore and he wants to be mozi other people, create Megillah. Um, most Megillah are probably bought as gifts for people that have no use for them. Um, I happen to own a Megillah because my father, Lava Shalom, bequeathed me the Megillah that I once wrote for him. So he gave it, so to speak. He says, you know, when I move on, you'll get this Megillah. So I own this Megillah. And yes, I do bring it to yeshiva to follow, and sometimes I feel maybe I shouldn't because I really feel it's misleading. Why? Because the halacha is that you could read, you could be Yotze Megillah if you read 49% of the Megillah by heart. By heart. So that if the Balkore is, is reading something and the little kid next to you starts screaming, and then as a result you miss two words. So all you have to do, you don't need a kosher Megillah, you look in, into your Chumash, and you read loud enough that you could hear you, to your ears, you read those two words that you missed. But, obviously, while you're reading those two words, Balkari already moved on. 
And while you're reading those two words, you missed another two words. So here you have to use your brains and you have to speed up. In other words, you're going to have to probably read at least an entire sentence carefully and quicker than the Balkhor, right? And once you get ahead of him, then you jump back on the train. And that's all a person has to do. Okay, um, a person who's nodding off, um, meaning falling asleep. So here the halacha is, if the person nodding off is the Balkhore, then he's Yotze, as long as every word came out of his mouth. But if the person nodding off is, are the listeners, and yes, it's a very, very common thing to see around yeshiva or any shul, you have people that are nodding off, and you're not Yotze, which is why some people stand. There's no din of Amida to listen to Mikra Megillah, other than it keeps you more alert and, and, and you won't be falling asleep. If you found yourself falling asleep, then again, what you have to do is find a place in the Chumash where you for sure heard from the Balkhore right? and start reading at a, at, at a high speed to catch up to pass the, 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 the place of the Balkhore. Right? And once you get up to him, then you again jump back on the train and then you follow. Thank you very much.